So out of all the audio gear that I have in this house, believe it or not, the most prized possession, I would say, prized audio possession I have has been in storage now for about the last nine years. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I've been watching some YouTube videos the last couple of weeks on audiophile gear and, and real high-end audio systems. And it's kind of got my, my, the bug that I've always had since I was a kid building little speakers with cardboard boxes. It's, it's uh, got that itch going and it's time to scratch it. So we're going to start. I'll, I'll introduce you to my uh, tower speakers. These babies uh, I built with my father when I was probably about 18 years old, so we're going back uh, quite a few years, uh, uh, to say the least on that. So um, they have a lot of sentimental value to me, obviously being built with my dad, but uh, they also just sound freaking incredible. That said, the years haven't been kind to them. Uh, they've made five different moves with me in across three different states, and they show it. Um, they've had cats, our cats have done a little bit of damage. As you can see, the tweeters kind of punched in from their paws. Uh, clawing took off the, uh, took a chunk of the, the uh, rubber surround out, as well as the, um, whatever you call that foam piece there, just kind of a trim. So drivers are a little banged up. The cabinets uh, have really taken a beating in some of the moves. So I get some road rash there. A uh, little bit dusty from sitting in this little closet here for the last six years. Uh, but I really haven't used these in probably 10 years now. And that's kind of a shame, but uh, I also knew that I would never get rid of them and someday down the road I would uh, get that itch again. And uh, here we are. So what I would like to do is um, I'm going to show you, I want to walk you through what these currently are and kind of the specs on them and then I want to share with you some of the ideas and things that I've learned over the years uh, that we're going to do to these guys to modernize them really focus them in for for music quality and um, restore the cabinets actually I think we're going to paint, paint them a different color as well and do a different finish but yeah I'm going to uh, kind of give you the the plans that's been keeping me up at night getting excited just thinking about it so as you can see, we have four uh, five inch aluminum cone drivers that go across the front here. Uh, these bottom three are in a three way crossover network. These are dedicated to mid bass. So these drop down to 50 Hertz on the low end. I can't remember what the cutoff is on the high end for those, but wherever that cutoff is, that's where this fourth driver comes into place. This one is uh, a mid-range and it's broken into its own separate cabinet from the bottom. In fact, this is not one big box. There's multiple compartments in here, um, all designed to uh, give the drivers the right amount of space and it's a sealed cabinet. Uh, obviously the top there, it's a one inch dome tweeter. Um, those will definitely be replacing as well. And um, I'm gonna go a little higher end. In fact, I, I think I'm gonna be replacing that with a compression horn driver. Um, which uh, I've really grown to like in, in JBL speakers and uh, I think it's I need a lot of tweeter in these to offset uh, the, that strong mid-range with the multiple drivers the the great part about having multiple drivers it's almost like a line array system where you can get so much volume out of these towers and they don't even break a sweat down the bottom there you'll see we have a 10 inch side firing woofer in a sealed chamber as well um, those, I, I, I don't remember spending a whole lot of money on that driver. I don't think they're all that great, so that may be up for a replacement as well. But uh, I'm going to mess around with it a little bit. In fact, I may end up um, doing a, a port in this one. Um, although it won't be, I don't think it'll be a regular port. I, I may do something like a waveguide setup inside there. But um, we're going to mess around with that sub, and uh, from memory, the, the issue with that sub is it, it doesn't hit low enough. It picks up at the 50 hertz. In fact, it picks up a little higher than 50 hertz, so we may have to tap or work with the crossover on that a little bit. And uh, yeah, there, there's room for improvement definitely on the base end, but with the two side firing tens, uh, when they're set up properly for, for music listening, that should give me all the muscle that I'm going to need. So we're now looking at the back of these speakers, and yes, there's more speakers. 
So I had set this up as a direct reflecting type of, of system originally. Uh, I am not going to be doing that on when, when we redo this. I'm going to be removing these back speakers. In fact, I'm probably going to notch out the cabinet just to give it some architectural shape since I don't need that and I don't need those drivers anymore. Um, but we're going to be uh, removing that because I'm, I'm going to go for a real pure listening experience here. I want them directly fired out the front. If you look down to the bottom here, you'll see these are set up to be bi-amped with um, two sets of binding posts, uh, one of which goes to the subwoofer and the other focus. It doesn't want to focus. Uh, the other goes one to the sub and then one to the um, to the front, uh, to the main speakers. And, and that top one runs through a mid a uh, three-way crossover, uh, third, uh, second order, third order, uh, crossover network. So I guess the first step to this process is going to be to start the disassembly and pull out all the drivers. The biggest issue I've found so far is these drivers are no longer available and since we've got a few damaged um, that would be a problem. However, I have a solution. As I said before, I originally had built this for home theater and luckily I decided I would build a center channel to go with those towers. So that center channel is going to give us basically four replacement drivers that otherwise I would kind of be up the creek. Um, so we'll disassemble this, although it looks like one of these has a yeah, dust caps pushed in, but uh, still I've got three good drivers out of this that I can use to replace some of the drivers here that are obviously pretty well damaged. So I think that's going to work out nice. Now obviously I won't have a center channel when we're done with that. Um, but uh, to save the big boys, I don't mind uh, sacrificing the center channel since I'm not going to need it anymore. As you can see the cabinets themselves are fully lined with foam and I was wondering if I was off a little on, on how old these were but uh, look what I did way back. Let's see here. 72101. So yeah these guys are actually 18 years old or very close to it anyway as you can see right by the crossover network there. Um, but this is the kind of the base mid base chamber so it, it's sealed off at this level and obviously sealed off where the subwoofer, the 10 inch, is in its own chamber. And this wall isn't the back wall of the speaker in the back here. That's actually pulled forward to make sure I maintain the right amount of space here. So some definite thought went into this and uh, I remember spending back in 01 quite a bit of money, um, you know, relatively speaking anyway, to uh, on, on the drivers and the equipment. So we've got some good stuff in here. Looking in that 10 inch base uh, cavity or subwoofer compartment here, you'll see there's a big monster choke down there that cuts off the, the high end frequencies and just directs the lows to the sub. Uh, I forgot to mention the cabinets are actually made of poplar, uh, which, is a, uh, which is a hardwood. It's um, excellent for, for, building, for building speakers. The only disadvantage is it's obviously it's a hardwood so it's pretty heavy stuff but that also works to your advantage for resonance and things like that. So um, very well made cabinets and, and definitely worth the effort here of, of bringing these guys back to life. But there's one stripped out, uh, one cabinet anyway stripped out. And we'll strip out the rest of them here and gather up all our good drivers, separate the ones that are damaged. And then um, since the drivers are out, I can actually move these into the garage because they're light enough. Otherwise they're about a hundred pounds a piece.
I'd say we got that stripped down faster than a Honda in the hood. Um, so we got all my drivers laid out here and uh, the majority of those again we're going to be able to save which is great because uh, when you add up that many speakers it gets pretty pricey. But um, as far as the plans go here, um, I think we're going to start on the cabinets first and do what I need to do with these. So I, I think what I'm going to end up doing is making a cut right about here. We're gonna go straight down. We're gonna do a nice arch this way and over and back. That'll sit right on top of this bottom uh, first chamber here. And uh, the idea there is just to kind of give it a more contemporary look. We'll, we'll get rid of some of the boxiness. And the boxiness was in at the time when I built these, like Definitive Technologies had their towers. Um, th this was a, a very, uh, very cool looking speaker back in the day, but now I, I really want to dress it up a little bit and give it some uh, more architectural style points here. Uh, as far as the finish goes, I'm kind of not sold on any finish yet, but my first thought is strip the paint down off the front only and just do a nice dark reddish dark stain uh, and then do maybe a white on the rest of the cabinet just to lighten it up a little bit. And I think the white and the darker stain would contrast really well and then clear coat the hell out of the thing with you know three coats of the three thick coats of clear um but i'm not sold on any of those ideas yet may also just do the whole thing in white um definitely be taking the feet off we're going to put the aluminum posts in um kind of like the, the isolation posts which i think will look really nice with the aluminum cones of the speaker i think the aluminum cone in the white is going to look nice too so i don't know we're gonna kind of bobble around those ideas in my head for a bit here and see if I can figure out what I want to do. Um, but one thing's for sure, I am super pumped to be working on these things and I'm really excited to hear uh, to hear them once they're kind of restored here and really geared in for audio for music listening only. Uh, super psyched for that. But uh, as always, I very much appreciate you guys watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, criticisms, make sure you throw them down in the comments section. If uh, you're not subscribed and you want to make sure you get notified when I put up the next video uh, on this project, make sure you, you subscribe and very much appreciate all my subscribers for watching. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap this particular video up. Everybody, have a great day.